What is the impact of de-emphasizing human rights in our foreign policy? Well, first let me say that there are a set of very fair questions to ask about how you balance a range of equities in any given day of foreign policy or any given encounter, and it's hard. I mean, you know, talking to an African leader about LGBT rights is no fun for our ambassadors around the world. Like, that's not their favorite thing to go and do, even if they believe they should, <clears throat> because, you know, criminalizing same-sex uh, relationships is cruel and inhumane and in violation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, similarly, talking to the Saudi ambassador about women's rights and, you know, voting and driving and is, is no fun, and it's something they're likely not to heed in any immediate sense. But it is the case that our soft power has derived from many things, including you know Broadway musicals like Hamilton and our culture and our sports and all the rest. But it also has derived from peoples around the world, not governments, we're never thrilled uh, about this. I mean, even on the refugee and migration stuff, we had to talk to European governments about closing their borders to the, to the flow of people. So even raising human rights with your closest allies who share your values is not fun and not necessarily impactful in the moment, but it is a part of what people who are oppressed or who just don't feel their voices are being heard, what they have counted on the United States uh, for doing. And they've even counted on us doing it in hypocritical ways. I mean, no one has ever been perfect in the way that they have chosen to preach the gospel of human rights who's led the United States. We weren't, you know, certainly uh, we're seeing a very different version of it in this administration. So this administration is saying, in a way, like, hey, we're gonna be more honest, right? We're gonna just say that we're de-emphasizing it and it's not gonna be a factor, but they are going further than that in embracing people like Duterte, you know, in the Philippines, who is open about using force against, uh, you know, people he says are, are uh, drug users or involved in the drug trade, but who have no due process and are just being mowed down in the streets. He op has been open in the past, not so much recently, about his affection for, respect for Vladimir Putin. So that's not merely you know, choosing to balance the variables in a different way. And yet, one can be struck that when we intervened in Syria after the chemical weapons attack and bombed you know, the, uh, facilities involved in murdering civilians, that the language was the language of human rights and about children who shouldn't be killed by their government when we tried to reverse some of the steps on the Cuba normalization process that we had unleashed, again, last week or whenever that was, the language was all about human rights in Cuba. Now, what won't work is to give speeches about de-emphasizing and, and other speeches about embracing, you know, bloody leaders and then turning around and invoking humor. I mean, that, that just, even by the standards of, uh, what is it, the, the tribute that, that uh, the vice plays, or what is the thing about hypocrisy? Anyway, the, you know, that, that we, 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 nobody has been perfect in being fully consistent on human rights, and, and we weren't either, but there's, there's a way of doing it now uh, where it's so clear that this has been uh, put to one side, and, you know, people could get used to that. It would be a great shame for all those people out there who count on us, but they could get used to that. But what they will never get used to is overtly de-emphasizing it or saying it doesn't matter and then turning around and invoking it as your rationale. That can't work.